Walton World, welcome to Live with Candice and Chris. As you can see, my special guest co-host today is Mr. Kennard Lang, former mm. NFL player, and we are just going to have a great conversation. Yes, we are. But guys, you know how we do. We got to start with a breakdown where we discuss the latest buzz in pop culture and news trending around the world. So it's primary time. Elections are heating up, and we're taking it all the way to Georgia. So former football star Herschel Walker is running for the Republican seat, and Democrat Senator Raphael Warnick was going to face off. Now, these are two black men, so this will be a really interesting race. Um, Herschel also won Tuesday's primary for U.S. Senate of Georgia against five Republicans. Now... Herschel is kind, there's it's kind of some backlash back and forth with people saying that, you know, they're bringing up his past, his ex marriage, bringing up that he had, you know, mental abuse, different things. Do you think that's fair? D does that really make a good Republican or a Democrat? I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. So, when one thing about it, mm -hmm. Herschel got on his side. He was Mr. Georgia Bulldog anyway. So, I mean, you got to look at that as well. I mean, that's true. That's part of stuff that you've thrown as well that a lot of people don't kind of look at the underline. He was Mr. Georgia Bulldog. Right. There, brought him a national championship. So, right. that stuff kind of ties in him. And it is because that's almost, he, he's a hero. Yeah. That, the state that's, of Georgia. Yeah. So yeah. He, he made Vince Dooley the head coach there, who he was, who was for Herschel Walker. He wouldn't have got that national championship. Come on, Herschel. <laughs> Hey, hey. G g give it to us. Give it to us all the way. Because yeah. you know what's really interesting is Herschel didn't even show up for a lot of the Republican debates. So he is definitely a front runner that Georgia loves. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, so it is. It is going to be very interesting to see how it goes. Ooh. So, you know, I don't wish bad on no man. A best man wins. Mm -hmm. So the NFL can do a lot more after retirement. Let's see that. But a lot of his thing was, mm -hmm. though, was in college. Yeah. That's where he made his big name at in the state of Georgia where right. he, he's running for um, for for a seat. Yeah. So that's the, that's the big thing of it, you know. Everybody know he's most of Georgia Bulldog was it for him that we have no national championship and Come on. and we know how big football is in the south. So football's Huge. real big in the south, so that's what I'm saying that's one of the leg ups you know he has uh with being a Georgia Bulldog. Well, we're going to have to watch this and see how it actually plays out because it's going to be a tough one, but mm -hmm. it's one that we're ready to see. Yeah, Two African-Americans running against each other. Yeah, totally yeah. different sides, Democrat and Republican. So that's going to be interesting. Yes, it is. So I'm looking forward to see what I happens. am, too. I am, too. Now, now, now uh, you got me into the football thing. We were <laughs> talking about football before, and now I feel like I'm really inducted. Yeah. So we got to take you to Walmart. So do you shop at Walmart? Yes, I do, to okay. be honest with you. Yes, I do. All right, well, let me tell you about the craziness that's going on. So Walmart has literally put a bad taste, I mean literally, in people's mouth with their controversial Juneteenth ice cream. So after the backlash online, they actually pulled the ice cream and apologized. But now here was really interesting about it. The Juneteenth label on the actual ice cream has a trademark. So, Walmart was actually going to try to trademark the ice cream? Even if, we're, if, they, if they, Walmart was trying to mm -hmm. have good intentions, they didn't, it didn't come out so hot. It, it didn't. And that's no. why I stay away from Walmart. Yeah, so. I do. If I go to Walmart, it has to be at an odd hour where everyone's sleeping is. No one in the store. Because mm -hmm. just the strangest things happen at Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, you do try catching them odd, them odd times real oh, early yeah. in the morning. I ain't going to lie. I try to get there first, first thing it open. You do? No, oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's me anyway. I like trying to get stuff done, knocked out early most time, uh -huh. and get it done early, because half the time people still sleep. So That's true. That's yeah. true. It's all about your timing. But we got to take a short break. We'll be right back with some more after this. Welcome back. So you're joining us for Unfiltered with my esteemed guest, former NFL player, Kennard Lang. He is going to talk to us about the various trials of NFL and his foundation, Kennard Lang Foundation. Now, he has played for several teams and as well as coach, head coach, and assistant coach for various high schools in Orlando, Florida. So welcome back. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you for having me Thank you for joining back. me. Yes, absolutely. So I want to get into the... Let's, let, let's just jump into the core of it. 
who is Kennard? Can you tell us about yourself? Who is Kennard Lane? Uh, In your background? You, you know what? I'll probably say who I am. Um, I'll probably say just a cool, laid back kind of cat, go mm -hmm. with the flow. Uh, I'll probably say the NFL was the part of my life. It's not my life. It's not my identity, who I right. am. Right. Um, I'm comfortable who I am and success I had and and I just try to fulfill the will of God and the things I have to do. So when saying that, yeah. that's why I love uh, coaching like high school football. It's one of the things that I grew up doing that I okay. love to share. And um, I'll probably say able to be around youth and, and, and mm -hmm. work with them. I mean, that, that's just me, a kid from Pine Hill that's, yeah. that's here. That's, you know, that's, that's back at his alma mater coaching high school football, which is that's like awesome. phenomenal to me. So you you were on the Broncos. You were in several teams over ten years, right? Yes. So, in coaching the NFL, are there any of those lessons that you've learned that now help you with coaching high school? Students? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What There's are some a, of those things that you took over? I'll probably say um, being a, a, a being a coach about life. Hmm. We had a coach named um, God bless him, Marty Schottenheimer. I okay. played him when I was the Washington Redskins. Uh, one thing about it, he treated everybody the same. Mm. The guy who's a free agent, all the way up to Bruce Smith and Daryl Green. Yeah, everybody got the same treatment and the expectation was the same. Right. But the main thing about him, when we talked about, when we had team meetings, he preached about life issues, mm. about life stuff, how, how your life affects your play, how life outside affects the important things you got to do. Like one of the things I remember he said to the end of the day, mm -hmm. before you make a decision, you control it. But once you make it, it controls you. Wow. So before you make that decision, you got to whether know whether or not you can live with the outcome that could possibly come out. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he, he, but he was a great guy. I mm -hmm. mean, a great man that you really look forward to. You know where he's coming from all the time. Right. No hidden agenda, but he cared about you as an individual. So that's like, one of the guys that him and um, Romeo Cornell was another mm -hmm. guy who as far as philosophies, as far as, you know, ain't no excuses. You got to get the job done. Right. It ain't a matter of saying, oh, this happened, that happened. Okay, you know what? If that's the problem, don't worry. I go to the next person who can get the job done. Does right. it sound like cutthroat? No, but there's no nonsense. I'm going to go to the person that I can depend on, mm -hmm. not the person who has, like the cliche, I'd rather take the person who who I who's more I can depend on with a person with ability. Right. Person with an ability, okay. I want a person with dependability. Right. That those are two different people. So all those skills that he has put into you, you're now putting into your students, the yeah. ones that you coach. So you're coaching kids from all demographics, from all different backgrounds. Yes. What is drawing you to teach at that high school level? Is it everything that he instilled in you that you're passing down? Yeah, I'd probably say mm -hmm. that and, and the, my parents. Okay. And the, they just stuff and stuff. My parents instilled in me. And, you know, and I love, like, watching, like, young kids succeed. Like, you yeah. know, everybody knows Evans now is a, is a real big shoot. I got nationalities. I mean, kids from different countries and everything. You got... Haitian, mm -hmm. you got Jamaican kids that's Bahamian. Right. You know, you still got your normal black and white. And, and the thing about it, just everybody working together and learning each other's culture. So that's one thing I try to do. Right. I mean, I know a little bit of Spanish. <laughs> I know a little bit of Creole. Yeah, okay. I know a little bit of black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not a little, <laughs> a little bit of black. black. I hope you know a lot of black. <laughs> black you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I know, and I know a little right. bit of Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? But I know, but I, I said okay. a little bit. But the thing okay. about it, though, you got to yeah. realize who you're with and who you're coaching. Yeah. And you got to try to meet them. It's not right. them meeting you. Yeah. It's working together and trying to meet each other. So in doing that, and you try, and once you get that real relation, right. and you see that you really genuinely care about them, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all about it. You treat them fair. You let them be the best student athlete they can be. Mm. And it's awesome. Like some of them going to be your first time college graduate. That's amazing. I mean, shoot, that's, that's like to me. That's the most important thing because right. then you realize in life aspect, you right. helping to break that chain in their house, that cycle. Come that on. That now, you know what? I can be somebody. Right. Where now it's not looking on TV where they see success. Right. Now I can look in my own house with my mom and dad and see success. 
Ooh. That's my big picture thing. Where That's good. I want to win championships. At right. Essence. Don't make me wrong, but like the cliche, championship might set the flow, but the character is gonna win you the championship. Come on. So if you get those kids that character, yeah, everything else is gonna come. It's gonna come to fruition. So right. I know it's a process, and that's the beautiful thing about it. Right. It's like that piece of clay. At yeah. the very beginning, the artist look at it like, right. dang, what is that? And as soon as you finish, next thing you sell it for five or ten grand. Well, guess what? We're going to mold this clay that we got going here, and we're going to close for a moment. But you better stay tuned because we'll be right back. So we are back with the second half of Unfiltered with our guest, Kennard Lang. So welcome back. Yes. Now we want to jump into your foundation. So tell us about the Kennard uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Kennard Lane Foundation mm -hmm. started back in, ooh, I think around 2003. It all started from where my grandfather, uh, my grandfather suffering from cancer, pancreatic cancer. Oh, wow. So he ended up passing away. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, during the process, I saw the effect that had in my family. Right. So, you know, I remember one time, uh, shoot, I was down in Miami with my friends. We were down there for like a little weekend. Then, unfortunately, as my grandfather passed. Oh, I'm sorry. So as we pulled up to my grandmama's house, mm -hmm. and um, you know, me and my friends got at the car, so they ended up getting on my mama's side first, and I came walking around. And I saw my mom get my own um, homeboy, uh, I think it was Derek. Derek right. let me get on the shoulder, started crying. Oh. And that, that just like took me back like, dang. Wow. My mom was like hurt bad. Mm -hmm. So when seeing that, I always try to make a vow, you know, if it's any way possible, mm -hmm. I don't want to see another family go through that. So, in saying that, so that's how the foundation got started. Okay. So, and from there, we took different steps where we do with education, also dealing with youth, as okay. far as we do back to school shopping. Um, we also do Christmas shopping. I love youth. that. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of stuff I do, I do back in the community where I'm from, get kids from the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Right up there, right, right near Evans, where, you know, that's, <laughs> that's where I grew up and that's where I came from. That's so why you're back in the community. community. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, we do that, but also, too, we do go to other schools. I'll be also partnered with Tildenville mm -hmm. also as well in doing that. And, but so, should also, we have uh, uh, Thanksgiving. So, we mm -hmm. do Thanksgiving baskets. We feed around like 100 families. Every year we have a golf out and that we do every year. We have That's a scholarship awesome. bank where we get ready ten one thousand dollars scholarship. So we come up on twenty years. Wow. Up. So and saying that it's just like one of those things, you know what? I I just wanna um see people smile. Yeah. And not, not you know, and just have a chance in life. You right. know, the only thing you owe in life is the opportunity. Right. But once you do, once you get it, it's on you. So I, I just try to give people opportunities like to be successful. That's awesome. So there's a por there's a portion of your organization yes. that helps those with cancer as well. So is that where the inspiration came from? Yes, it is. After yes. okay. Yes, it is. We work with the uh, company called Base Camp. Right. Where we partnered up like during the Christmas time. Right. We might see around like ten or eleven families. We go to OMC. Okay. So where we do there. Uh, we uh, drop off teddy bears. We used to be able to do that, but now with the COVID deal, it changed a lot of things. But right. we go there, we part of the Olive Garden where we give them like a lunch that day. Okay. They have spaghetti, bread, and everything, have a little presents to give to the kids, and most importantly, to let them know, and the mother and father who've been there, you know, hey, wow. people are thinking about you during this time, you know, we mm -hmm. love you, and, and just a hey, little variety of things like that. Okay. So what would you say the inspiration is to help little children? You like know what? That? Shoot, my I guess my parents, guess how I was raised in, yeah. in the environment that I was raised in. I say, to be honest with you, the environment right. I was raised in was always been about helping people. Giving back. And they're giving back and most importantly too, like both my parents, mm -hmm. they're both in um they both Greek. So my mm. dad's a, my mom's a Delta and my okay. dad's a Kappa. So when seeing that and the things they did. When I was grew up in it, like growing up, right. my dad was a cop. I'm in with him and see a lot of charity events. See stuff he did, giving back and helping the community. He's also the Boy Scout leader. So right. all the stuff really my family that was around, that's what really kind of put me into being in that mode. Well, you've impacted so many lives and you, you're yet to touch so many more because you got a lot in you that we need. But what would you say one of your biggest success stories that you can think of that really uh, hit you in the gut? Oh, uh, man. I won't say success, my success. I say uh -huh. it's the kids' success. 
Okay. Because they just followed the way that I felt the Lord told me to tell them. I say, mm. like a lot of them going to college, be the first one in their family. Um, see, I hate to say some names, but it, I mean, be listen. I remember. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I was at. Uh, I first started coaching at mm -hmm. Jones. Miss Miss Bridget Williams gave me a perfect, great opportunity. So, just real, real quick, everybody uh -huh. be like, "Hey, man, how are you a cat from Evans and you gonna go to Jones?" I said, "The opportunity happened that way." Yeah. But it took a Trojan to make, you know, the Jones program right. better. They're going to be mad about saying that. <laughs> and that's anyway. Jones High School <laughs> in Orlando, Florida, in case yeah. you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, but uh -huh. there's a lot of kids there that you saw, that I really saw firsthand. Right. That, you know, be successful. Like, I remember I had a kid named Ben Smarton. Okay. The Hamian kids. He mostly stayed there with his, with his two sisters. Oh, his wow. His parents were back. I don't know if I'm correct, his parents went there. Uh -huh. He graduated and went to college. Oh, that's awesome. You know what I mean? But but it, yeah. but it's just but there's other kids there as well that did the same thing. So I mean I hate but because I had a lot of kids that come through there. Right. And they know I love them all the same. Well, I gotta I gotta tell you thank you for joining us. Um yeah. this has been great. I hope you ex enjoyed your experience with me. It was okay. With that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Weepa>! <laughs> <laughs> Fighting words. No, really, thank you kidding. so much. You're doing You're so much in the community. You're helping youth on not just the physical aspect, but the mental, too. But we got to get out of here. I'm my guest today. But guess what? My homie, Chris, was out today. But he will be back with us tomorrow, bright and early in the afternoon. So, you know, we want to hear what you have to say. We want you to talk to us. We want you to reach out to us. Comment. Go on our Instagram page. Like. Candice and Chris live because we want to keep the conversation going. So once again, thank you. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I loved it. And and hopefully I kept this spot warm enough and good for Chris. You know, he'd be okay. You did. You did. Chris <laughs> will be happy. Chris will be happy. <laughs> but that's it, guys. We got to get out of here.